Okay, let's take a look at one of the most versatile retro clones out there. Stick around. <laughs> Old Man Grognard here, and I want to talk about a retro clone that makes some interesting, uh, it's an interesting mixture of things that makes it one of the most versatile retro clones on the market right now, and I'm talking about Swords and Wizardry by Matthew J. Finch. You can find this at Frog God Games. Um, it's uh, 144 pages. It is based on, I had to do a little research on this because I don't have the books. But it's based on the original three um, booklets of D&D plus, plus the Greyhawk supplement, which adds a few things in there. And it's got a few other, other quirks and things, too. Um, but it makes it really, really versatile. Um, first of all, the changes that are in it are... Um, you have your choice. Now, you do have to make a choice because I wouldn't run it both ways because it's probably schizophrenic. But as a game master, you have a choice of either ascending armor class or descending armor class. And it's nice because their entire product line of Frog God does things like, here's the one of the monster pages. You'll notice there is ascending and descending armor class in every single description which I really like. That makes it so much easier. And they turn out a lot of stuff. Um, and my first review of uh, Tome of Horrors Complete, okay, you know, that kind of stuff. It's quality stuff. Now, it also separates race and class like AD&D. I had to go look back to the original three booklets, and yes, they did separate race and class. They just don't, they don't go into it. It just says like, Dwarves can only be fighting men, and elves can be wizards or fighting. You know, they don't make a big deal out of it, but they do do that. So that kind of keeps it in line with that. They added um, the AD&D classes, which I like. So you have the assassin. So you have the monk. You know, things like that. And uh, what I found most interesting is you have one saving throw. Everybody has one saving for everything. Now, you're saying, well, how does that differ from the five saving throws, you know, for different for different situations? So, well, what it does is, in the class section, it will uh, give you pluses as you go up or whatever based on the class you have, which I find a little bit more plausible. Um, because, and it's also easier to keep track of. It's plausible because, like, as you get better in something and a profession, you know, you're going to get better at, like, <laughs> dodging doom. <laughs> so that makes sense rather than having these five saving throws you go constantly got to keep track of. And the interesting thing is a lot of things like this, they give you a, uh, you know, an alternative. It's like, okay, this is the original one did it this way. So here's the chart for this if you want to do the five saving throws. Okay, fine. They give you a lot of, of choices in this if you want to go back because admittedly, it's not exactly OD&D. Uh, um, they have Swords and Wizardry white box for that which I believe is a more literal, literal translation. I'm sure people will correct me on that. but um, And it just, and it makes it more, it just makes it more plausible. That's it. And uh, I, what I don't understand is they put the, put the half elf back in there. And uh, I mean, they've got the, the, you know, the dwarf, the halfling, the, the elf in there and the half elf and the human, but they didn't add half orcs or gnomes. Where's my gnomes? Um, because I don't know if you're gonna do it, do it all the way. You know, I mean, you gave all, all the classes from AD and D. Why don't you do that? That is a minor, minor nitpick. I'm sure I could add them from someplace else, like say Labyrinth Lord Advanced Edition Companion or some other retro clone, or make it up myself. I've done that before. Um, we added gnomes to Labyrinth Lord when uh, my group was playing it 
the 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 uh, I mean that was before we started using advanced edition, but we liked our nose better, so we used those. Um, and uh, here's my copy, by the way. This is why I, I I didn't show this at first because this is a I don't even know where I got this PDF, but this is the 2010 version of the book. Um, it's not like I said, it's not very big like the other ones. Um, and this was uh, a PDF that was printed out and a friend of mine bound it for me. And so I've been using that. And to make amends, <laughs> I did back the, as of this recording, I did back the uh, third edition Kickstarter, which is getting ready to wrap up here pretty soon. It's a beautiful, beautiful book. Um, <clears throat> where can you get it? Okay. Um, you can get the PDF, a no art version, for free, like the other retro clones, from Drive Through RPG or the Frog God Games website. As far as buying this game is concerned, it's easier to just go to the Frog God Games website. Uh, the hard, and I believe it's only sold in hardcover, so it's about thirty-five bucks, thirty-four ninety-nine, and uh, it's an easy buy. Like I said, I'll put some more links down there. And uh, it's a really versatile, and all the stuff they turn out, like I've showed you, are geared towards this to the point where if I see a Swords and Wizardry version or something, or it's made for Swords and Wizardry, I know I can use it with practically any retro clone from, you know, Holmes BX on up. You can probably even use it for with the original D&D. &D. So... It makes it really, really versatile. And my God, they really like to turn out monster books. Just put that out there. So, uh, you know, grab it if you can. Uh, grab the Kickstarter while, you, while it's still, you know, it's still funding. And if you want to talk about it, if you want to tell me about it, you know, oldmangrognar at gmail.com. So that's my review of Swords and Wizardry. And until next time, buh-bye. Thank <laughs> you.